So this is the engine that I pulled out of the Cadillac. And this is the six liter. There it is stating it's a six liter. It's not even bad. Um, it's not even rusted out inside of the, the ports here where the water water pump goes and sets. So I've decided not to go in and run this engine here. I'm actually gonna be in a, I actually went on Facebook and found somebody who had a a built GTO motor LS2 6 liter engine. Alright, I got my engine up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up tearing this thing all the way down so that way I can make sure everything is as it's as they stated because I don't know what it has exactly in there and if it's the only reason why I'm wanting to tear it down is just to make sure all the gap clearances and everything like that are still good and see it. And I'm pu I'm gonna be putting ring gap on the rings so I could put a turbo on here also. But I also have to clean it up, make sure everything's good and good, it's good and ready to go. This one is the aluminum block, the LS2 six liter full aluminum block. The the reason why I wanted this one is because the GTO had a little bit more of a like everything on the front, all of the uh, all of the things on the front here are a little closer, like by an inch or two. And that does significantly help with the uh, sizing inside of the motor bay or the engine bay. So that's why I wanted this and because it's a little bit lower also on the um, power steering pump. And it's not all in the way like this engine over here. Like the alternators up top, but this thing is all the way, it's a little bit higher than on the LS2 over there. It's jetting out of the engine a little bit more and spread out a little bit more. And even the intake is a lot higher. But that's why I went with this engine because it was one cheap 3,000. Well, I bought it for 3,000. But for me to go and source out all these parts on this engine and get it all done would have taken time and a whole lot more money. So thing that I'm gonna end up doing is just tearing it back down and putting fresh new seals on it um, it probably doesn't need fresh seals but I want to go and make sure everything is in there correctly and see what what cam is on there also it's a pretty big cam from what I've seen in the valley uh, but I want to be able to see what what lift and duration it has on it I'm hoping I can use that AC compressor uh, and then nothing else on the front of this motor is going to be interfering when it drops in. The one thing I'm going to be, that I am having to go and probably get is the oil pan. I'm going to need a, I'm going to need a front stomp oil pan. And those things aren't that cheap. They're a little bit pricey. I'm going to be keeping this oil pan though because this one will be a lot easier to fit in some of these other swaps if I do that. Probably gonna end up making myself some new motor mounts. Uh, I might be doing them by hand, like fabricate my own motor mounts. I'm gonna try and do this on a little bit of a budget because I, my whole budget went on this engine and so. But it gets me there quicker than having to, to wait, source out these problem, all these parts for this engine and everything like that. Uh, because it was uh, time consuming. I was on the computer a lot trying to see which heads were the best and everything like that and pulling it apart and getting her going. Looks like I got a comp cam system here. Looks like it was slightly, I don't know if you can see that, but it looked like it was slightly hitting the top of the um, valve cover maybe maybe not like right there I mean it's nothing major but I mean but it is a uh, comp cam roller rocker arms right there and 
Looks like beehive uh, valve springs also. And obviously there's no gunk in it in the end, in here, around in the cylinder head. And they're 1.72s. They built it like originally about 10 years ago maybe, something like that. But he blew the engine. The guy like rebuilt it maybe, I don't know, four or five years ago. It's apparently got 30,000 miles on the latest rebuild on it, so. I'm gonna get going on taking these out now. So I got the roller rocker arms out, and now I'm taking the push rods out. And they look like they are <laughs> 7.4 inch uh, crane cams, 95628. I'm gonna start getting these um, head bolts off, and those, those are ARP bolts. ARP, that means, well, it means I should be able to reuse them, so, and that they're good, really good head bolts. All right, so I'm going through it, and it's not looking bad. It has cross hatching still, you can see in the, uh, see there's cross hatching still in the cylinder wall so good thing I'm going through it a valve lifter has kind of blown out so the top is just kind of sitting up there so I'm gonna need one lifter if not try to look and see make sure all of them are going good but one thing I noticed I don't know if this is just me or not but there's a gap all the way around the piston I don't know if that's standard because of everything but that looks like a pretty decent sized gap so I actually rocked one of these sides like I don't know if you can see it's hard to see with this camera Right up there, there's a gap. It's a pretty decent sized gap all the way over. It's like I can rock the piston back and forth. So I don't know if that's how they are built. Because I can, I can move. You heard it? Move the piston back and forth, so I don't know if that's <laughs> it's standard if pistons go bigger or what. These are CNC ported heads. As you can see, the CNC machine was going through. This cylinder has a little bit more gunk in it. I might have to look through that one. Look at that one just a little bit more. The injector was spraying maybe too much or if it's burning oil. I'm not very sure. But this one has a little bit more gunk than this um, cylinder did. There's nothing out of the usual here. So, I mean, uh... Alright, we got the the oil pan and the windage tray removed. There's the part numbers. I'm gonna go look them up and make sure and see, see if they're forged. I even uh, measured it from the top of the piston board to the bottom dead center on the piston range and the cylinder bore. And it was about four and 96 thousandths. But I believe that that is a stroker. Especially, um, I found numbers right up here. It said scat 4.1 hundred thousandths. It has been clearanced to be a stroker. Little spots right down in there. I don't even know if you guys can tell or not. But some of it's been chiseled out so that the piston 
can come down further and clear everything. It does have ARP studs here for the crank bolts. It's got a double timing chain on here. I'm gonna go and measure the bearing clearances and everything like that, and even the piston to wall clearances. I'm gonna make sure what uh, camshaft is in there too. I just didn't have the tool to pull this harmonic balancer off, so I gotta go down and go and buy one. All right, I got the pistons out here. It didn't actually look too bad. It's just, um, well, they're forged pistons, so they're gonna have a little bit more rocking in it in the cylinders than usual. The black coating that they put on here is a little worn off on some. It might be only one or two that might not be horribly gone completely, but this mine, this one might be the worst. I'm gonna go back in there. I'm gonna do a little bit of honing. I don't feel nothing when I put my finger in there. I don't feel any ridges. Yeah, the crank and everything is looking good. Yeah, you can see where they had to machine it down to get uh, so that the piston can clear. So I'm doing the ring gaps. I'm gonna get those going tomorrow. Hopefully, I got my ring gap tool in the mail to to hand grind the to the right specs for to run a turbo on this engine. So on my next video, I'm gonna be just going through the engine and doing clearances and everything like that.